Hi, Kristen. Uh, nice to have you here with me today. Hello. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I'm speaking with Kristen Rasmussen, who you are a comedian, you're an actor, you do a lot of work um, <laughs> when it comes to the field of entertainment. So maybe so people understand where, where you're coming from, a little bit of an intro or anything you want to share about yourself in terms of your different type of work and how you ended up being also a, a comedy professional. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm Kirsten. I got my start uh, in Edmonton. That's where I went to university and everyone who I um, enjoyed was a comedian. They were all improvisers. So mm -hmm. I got my start out there starting with improv with a company called Rapid Fire Theater. Um, and then I've also went through a professional acting program there, but I think I just caught the comedy bug because I found comedians to be a great combination of nerd and intellectual and self-deprecating that fit in <laughs> with my vibe. Um, yeah. And then I've kind of bounced around since then. I was in Montreal for a few years where I started a theater called Montreal Improv Theater with some friends. And, uh, and then I moved to Toronto uh, where I did stuff with Second City and I work with Bad Dog Theater. I work with all the kind of theaters in town mm -hmm. um, and then started working for film and television as well, because uh, as much as I love live comedy, there's not a ton of money in it. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but I've always taught as well. I think as soon as I started doing improv, I started teaching as well. Um, youth, I started teaching youth. And then uh, as I kept going, I started teaching more and more people. So teaching, directing, coaching has also been uh, a huge part of my life for the last 15 years as well. That's so cool. So did you think that even though I guess you've mentioned this already, you you were in university and you found yourself gravitating to funny people, but did you really think that you would stick with comedy as long as you had or? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I just, it felt like the place where I made sense. Like I, I enjoyed doing dramatic work. I felt I often played um, <laughs> really intense characters in school. <laughs> um, but when I got onto stage for being a comedian, I felt like, uh, it just made sense to me. I have a kind of cartoony physical presence on stage, which mm -hmm. lends itself to comedy really well. And yeah, I just kind of felt at home. And when I met, um, when I met other improvisers, I was just like, oh, I feel like these are my people and this is, and this is my home. Yeah. And for, for people who might not, I want to also make sure that we reach people who might, might not really come to, um, comedy festivals. We're going to talk sure. about comedy sketch fest soon. Yeah. But I want to uh, maybe talk about improvisation and what is it about improvisation that you find cool and freeing or neat, um, maybe versus other types of comedy? Uh, well, I mean, I definitely want to talk up sketch because that's what we're all here for. And I feel like I was doing sketch before I understood what sketch was. And right. um, I think like being I grew up in a very small town in Saskatchewan where there was not much to do. So I watched a lot of Saturday Night Live reruns. <laughs> Um, so sketch is definitely a huge love of mine. And I think um, improv and sketch, they go beautifully hand in hand, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but uh, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, improv is just comedy that's being made up off the top of your head. So it can be a really fun way to interact with comedians on stage if you're an audience member and to know that it's it's being made up. And in that way, it's kind of more accessible because you have a hand in what's going to be happening on stage that night. And also um, as a storyteller, it's exciting because you're telling different stories every single night. And with sketch, it kind of has the same quality of improv in the sense that it's fleeting. Like, you know, that's why shows like Saturday Night Live are so popular because we know we're going to see a new show every single week that are going to deal with things that are happening in the world um, in a, in a comedic way. And so, or like a, a show like uh, this hour has 22 minutes. We know that they're going to be talking about things that are going on in our world in a funny way. And so in that same way that it's like, it's driving, you can't write one sketch and be like, great, I'm done. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to keep going. And that's, what's uh, wonderful and awful about it. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the day, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I wanted to ask about that because, you know, uh, people should know that you also are an award-winning uh, best improviser of Canadian comedy awards. So there, there's some history there in terms of the work that you're doing as well as you've done some ensemble work. Um, can you talk a little bit about your ensemble work and that what's, what, what that's like? 
Yeah, I mean, um, I did a lot of solo sketch before I moved to Toronto, just because I moved around so much. And so it was easy. It's easy to tour when you're just um, on your own and paying for one person's bills and stuff. Uh, But when I moved to Toronto, I started working with uh, Second City, which works in ensembles. Um, And I started directing ensembles as well and directing sketch groups, both solo and ensemble. And um, I think there's beautiful things about both. I love solo sketch. I love it so much. I think it's so interesting and um, allows an actor to really uh, explore their ideas. But I think ensemble sketch is also like, it's incredible. It's you can you can create more theatrical scenes, you have a spectacle. Um, So yeah, I've won I won awards for being part of an ensemble. Uh, I was part of a show called she the people that second city put together that was an all um all women and non-binary troupe Uh, and so that was really fun really special and some of my best friends are in that and um and then also i directed an all squeak an all (laughs) an all queer there we go an all queer sketch troupe um and that we won best production that year, which was uh, Extravaganza Eleganza, which is put together by Tom Hearn, who I believe is in the Sketch Fest. I'm not sure. He usually is. Um, But yeah. (laughs) Uh, So he put that together and it was all queer sketch troupe. And it was amazing, like sitting down with a, with a table full of of queer comedians and all talking about kind of the different experience we've had and writing a show from that experience. It was, that was one of the best experiences of my life directing that show. That's so interesting because now, you know, we have an idea of how you can start as as a solo person. And now you're also working behind the scenes, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of, you know, coaching, educating and now directing. And um, it's not a fair question to ask, but I will ask <laughs> it in terms of whether you have a preference for any of those roles or how maybe if not a preference, you know, how do they complement each other? Um. Yeah, do I have a preference? I d- I don't know. Like I don't see myself um staying ever in one place entirely. Like I think um every time I go on stage, I'm still learning things. I still feel really gravitated towards the stage and towards laughs. I mean, most most comedians are laugh junkies and I'm definitely one of those people. Um but it is also I feel like really excited when people bring work to me that they're excited about. Um and ask me to help edit or honor it or find good space for it. I think that it's it's very collaborative and it's really exciting to be like, oh, what is your vision? And I'm going to try as best as I can to bring it to life or to help you with things that maybe you don't think about as often because I come from a theater background and some sketch artists don't come from theater background, come more from a writing background or whatever. Maybe they're not always thinking about how would I move this on a stage? How would this mm-hmm. look to the audience? What are there? Are there different character choices I can make? So that's something that a director can do that I find really exciting. Um, and it's really, yeah, they're totally, they're like the same experience, but totally different. So I don't have a preference. <laughs> I really enjoy them both. Um, yeah. And I guess it's also, you also get feedback on people when you're working with other folks that you also, like you were saying, it's always learning. It's a two-way street. Um, in terms of maybe you give suggestions and they also give suggestions back. Yeah, it's very collaborative in it. Like the end of the day, um, whoever's, you know, whoever's work it is, like often when I'm hired to direct, it's like a group or a single person hiring me to help them with their baby, their sketch, Mm -hmm. uh, their sketch show, so to speak. So at the end of the day, it's up, it is up to them and hopefully up to like what they want to do with it. But um, I can be a sounding board. I can, I can push like, Oh, I really think we need to edit this. Or um, I think this would be more helpful here, or let's approach this from a different angle, um, which can be really helpful. I directed most recently a show that um, won audience words at sketch fest, a few years ago, I think right before the pandemic, um, called Dead Parent Society. And that was a sketch show all about people who had lost parents. I don't have that experience. Mm -hmm. And I believe Shohana Sharma and Cecilia, who hired me, she wanted someone who hadn't had that experience to kind of help curate it, make sure it was accessible um, to maybe someone who doesn't have that experience. Um, And so that was a very cool experience, again, of being like people being very open and very vulnerable about their experiences. And then me being like, and how okay well I think it would be funny if <laughs> um so it was it was uh it was wild but it was really great 
Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you about your workshop soon, but I, I, you touched upon, you know, um, this, uh, the parent society and relatability in terms of, you know, the, the topics as well. Can you maybe share a little bit of uh, your opinion on, you know, the topics that you might tackle and, you know, how comedy lends itself to discuss things that are sometimes, like you said, grief, um, politics, and all kinds of parts of life. Yeah, I think like, I, I I think what I love about comedy is that laughing is a vulnerable thing. Like we don't, I don't often, you know, it's not like when I was watching Center Night Live when I was a kid, I was like, oh, these people are being so vulnerable or I feel so vulnerable, but it is actually a very vulnerable thing to laugh in front of people. So when you're a comedian and you're getting people to like open belly laugh, that's putting them into a vulnerable position. Um, I think for myself, like my favorite laughs come from moments when I really care about a character Mm -hmm. um, and I'm laughing. So I think there is something in there, like the greatest laughs I've had in my life have been with my siblings, my my wife, people that I've gone through the most intense uh, stuff with, Mm -hmm. I am able to have the biggest laughs. So as comedians, it's kind of like, great, how do we bring that Um, vulnerability to the stage and invite our audiences to feel vulnerable enough to have these huge belly laughs with us. And I think that brings in um, people wanting to talk about stuff that has touched them in their life. I mean, there's that saying that like uh, tragedy plus time is comedy. And and I, (laughs) I, I think I mostly believe that. (laughs) Um, I also feel like, I also feel like it's generational. Like I don't, like, I think comedy 15 years ago wasn't so raw as it is today. And I think like people younger than me, like they really want to talk about heavy stuff in their comedy. And I think it's great. Um, And I think we still, we still have a responsibility as comedians to take care of our audiences if we can, like to, to understand that we're still selling it as comedy. So if we tell people this is a comedy show, And then you come to my show and I'm talking about my mental health. I I still feel like it's our responsibility as comedians to make sure that the audience knows I'm okay enough that they can laugh at whatever we're doing. Mm -hmm. And that can't happen if I'm still, you know, like if I'm still in the middle of my mental health crisis, am I in a good enough place to make sure that I'm taking care of my audience so that they can actually laugh at what we're talking about? Because that's what I said on my poster. I said, this is a comedy. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, I think there, you know, there's a there's a delicate balance there, uh, but I think it's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, that's also why I gravitate to comedy as well as, a, as an audience member and, and someone who also wants to process things in different ways. Right. Because I yeah. love theater and I love film, but but I also want to laugh. And yeah. I think all of that uh, comedy is a I can laugh in a theater show or a, on a movie, but I think yeah. in the moment of when you're experiencing a comedy sort of performance, it's just a different kind of energy that that is in the room um, because we know that the person on stage is actually being vulnerable with us, right? So yeah, yeah, it's an interesting kind of feedback um, experience. So Toronto Sketch Fest is having you back this year. You're Yay. doing a directing live sketch comedy 101. What's that about? So yeah, it's a workshop for folks who want to know more about comedy sketch directing. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be a live workshop, and my hope is to kind of bring people in and either give them uh, some tools as a director themselves, and then also uh, tools on how to work with the director. So at what point in your process do you want to hire a director? Because there's many different point, points where you can invite someone else in, as we're just talking about, like writing sketch, writing comedy, it's vulnerable and it's very personal. And um, comedians need to find their own voice and who they are. So you can bring in a director at any time. Like I've worked with people who have their show mostly written and they're bringing me in to edit and help stage it. So kind of later in the process, um, I've had folks bring me in at the beginning of the process to say like, I want um, a director to help facilitate even the beginnings of ideas, the beginnings of sketches. So there's a lot of different ways when you can, a lot of different ways you can bring in directors to help facilitate your work. There's troops like um, Sex T Rex, which is one of Toronto's absolute best sketch troops. They're absolutely amazing. And they bring in different people to work with them near the end of their process. So they will do a bunch of work as an ensemble, and then they will hire uh, different directors for, for different purposes and get a bunch of different feedback and then decide amongst themselves. So there isn't one way going about getting a director, but it can be so useful because 
comedy is a conversation between you and the audience to get that outside eye to see, is there anything that we might be missing any way we can punch it up, focus it in. Um, so yeah, I really feel like I want to encourage people to use that. We have so many talented directors here in Toronto uh, and coaches and people who have knowledge to give and are excited to give it. And just the idea that like, oh, well, I can't afford a director for the whole time. That's cool. Bring someone in for a pass of your show and they'll watch it once and give you, I'm sure, so many helpful things. So that's kind of the idea is like, hey, you're interested in directing. I'll give you a bunch of skills and tools for that. And also I'll give you a bunch of skills and tools to get the most out of someone you want to hire. That's also cool. So it's so it's a workshop that's open to people who might want to direct, but also maybe artists or comedians that want to sort of learn more about what it's like to have a director on. The- yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how it could be useful. And what's the format going to be? Is it going to be, are there going to be any interactive kind of components uh, during the time or? Yeah, yeah. I think I want to get people up and talking about stuff. So we'll probably do some um, writing exercises. So like, for example, when I am brought in um, to work with people at the beginning of of the process, like for example, this year for a dead parent society, we re put it up for next stage and we had some actors who couldn't be involved. So we had to write some new sketches. So we did two to three session writing sessions where I uh, led them through exercises and they came up with some amazing ideas. So I'll probably do a little bit of that. So there'll be a little bit of writing um, and then uh, probably a lot of talking and a bit of Q and a. That's cool. Just want to make sure people know it's, you know, what, what they can expect and, and hopefully get them in I'm sure it's already kind of getting um, close to full. But for anyone who's interested, the workshop is Comedy One on One. And I think it's Sunday, March 10th at 12 noon. Um, in terms of Toronto Sketch Fest, uh, you mentioned that you already, you know, you've been part of it a few times. As someone who also enjoys laughing and enjoying other people's work, um, what is it about Sketch Fest that you that you sort of enjoy when you when you're able to attend yeah I think what I love is that um is the variety that you're gonna see like uh even within one bill you can see two completely different groups and vibes and I think that's exciting because there's something for everyone and I feel like you know different people gravitate towards different kind of comedy I love dark insane chaotic comedy um and I also love like uh really polished clownish comedy so uh everyone has their different style some people like they don't some people don't want to think some people don't want to um (laughs) be challenged they just want to be entertained the world is tough i just want to laugh i just want to see a bunch of silly characters so there's going to be something for everyone which i love and obviously a festival is an opportunity to see talent that you wouldn't normally be able to see in toronto so either it's that you know someone exciting like one of the kids in the hall is like bringing some new work or um, or that you have people traveling from all over Canada and from the U.S. to come and bring stuff that you wouldn't see because you're not in Vancouver or Boston or wherever the people are traveling from. So it's really exciting opportunity to see up and coming comedians and some very established comedians uh, try new work, try solid work. And you're just going to see a buffet. It's a buffet. And who doesn't love a buffet? If you don't love a buffet, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> I hear that. I and mean, I couldn't say it better myself because I also think that's what I enjoy about it. It's sort of the way I would equate it is to like a Toronto French Fest as well with this yeah. like theater that you might not see otherwise. So yeah. it, it's a chance to even just pick a day. If you cannot make it the whole festival, I would also suggest maybe pick a day or two days and, and kind of stay at the venue <laughs> which is yeah. times on a weekend and, and sort of enjoy and and be surprised too I think be willing to be surprised it's also yeah. another thing that I like about um sketch fest um uh, what else are you working on Kristen before I forget anything what else am I talk work- about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I'm uh I'm trying to I'm like wow what uh, did I prepare this I <laughs> I mean I I teach all over the city I teach at bad dog I teach at comedy bar pro I teach at the assembly theater and um uh, I do some shows around town as well. And I'm also, I like, I write for TV and film. So right now I'm working on some samples for that. So a lot of my focus writing time goes towards screenwriting now instead of sketch writing, but I still do sketch write every once in a while. So, uh, yeah, those are kind of the fun things I'm working on at the moment. Are we seeing you on stage anytime soon? 
Uh, I have some improv shows coming up. Um, I do some improv shows at Comedy Bar East on the Danforth uh, oh. called Crush City. That's every Saturday night at 930. I'm not there every Saturday, but I'm often, yeah. often there. Yeah. Okay. I'll be sure to link it so people know to support Comedy Bar. I, I'm on the West Side, so I know. Oh, where, amazing. But the East Side is also just as fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and if people want to follow you, Kirsten, what are your what are your handles or your you know what are your socials and website? My socials are um, I'm at Kiki Razzle on uh, Twitter. If anyone's X, I guess what is it called? Oh my gosh! And uh, I, I know. <laughs> And uh, on Instagram as well, I'm Kiki Razzle. And I'm, you know, I'm not on there every once in a while, but whenever I have a show, I usually do promote. Excellent. So it's always good to to share because I find that that's the new way to contact people. People are like, what's your handle? I know. <laughs> I, guess, I guess, you know, that's where we're at now these days. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for sharing so much about your work. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we'll connect somewhere around the Sketchfest route. And yeah, 100%. The workshop. Thank you so much. I hope to see a bunch of people there. Woohoo! Right. Thanks, <laughs> awesome. Thanks again. Thank you.